welcome back to Dave's Small Engines. Um, I've been super busy here working on BR600 Magnum leaf blowers. It's got the steel four mix engine. Uh, as you can see here, I have three or four blocks apart. These ones were scored and uh, damaged, just used for spare parts. I wanted to make a quick video showing you something that I just found. I just finished rebuilding a leaf blower. So I put the whole thing back together. Um, it's, it's the third or fourth one I've done over the last couple days. And I like to do them in batches. So if I have a batch of trimmers or a batch of blowers, I just find it a lot easier to get into the groove and get used to all of the parts, which is especially true on the BR600 uh, Magnum blowers because of the Formix engine and all the uh, springs and valves and, and push rods and um, all the different intricacies that are uh, found in the BR600 series Formix blowers. So I got the blower back together, starts, runs, no problem, uh, idles fine, but when I would throttle up all the way, the maximum RPM I was getting was 5,600, and it should be close to 7,000, if not over 7,000, depending on what uh, end on the nozzle that you have. So I went through all of my normal steps. I rebuilt the carburetor. Um, no problem there. I checked the impulse line. Then I swapped out the ignition coil because I heard that sometimes these have issues with uh, the last few RPM and, and putting out the correct amount of RPM. Didn't fix anything. So what does that leave me with? Okay, well, let's check the muffler. So I pulled the muffler off. Uh, spark arrestor screen, no problem. Usually that's something you check first when your engine won't rev out all the way. The little screen that goes in the muffler to prevent sparks from flying out oftentimes gets clogged with carbon and um, that doesn't let the engine breathe or expel the exhaust like it's supposed to and then you get the issue with it being kind of choked out and not being able to uh, fully maximize the RPM. So then I ran the leaf blower without the muffler on, uh, of course using ear protection, uh, quite loud and no change, no difference at all. So now that leaves me with an issue between the carburetor and the muffler. And what does that mean? The cylinder block. You essentially have to take the entire darn thing apart before you can get to the engine block. And then once you do, you're left with this engine block and then you have to remove the bottom clamshell and pop out the cylinder. Now let me zoom in here, guys, because uh, uh, I want to show you what I was looking for and that, what I found. Okay, so then I started thinking maybe it's got low compression. Maybe the, um, you know, the fuel is blowing by and it's not being able to process the fuel because the rings are worn out. Well, after I clean this piston up, this is what it looks like. Not a lot of use, I would say. Definitely didn't get very hot. Of course, I've cleaned this up with a wire wheel. So this looks great to me. Okay, so then I checked the piston rings. No issues. Tons of meat left on these. So here is a, um, a good ring here, and here's what a worn out or highly used BR600 ring looks like. So that's the difference between the two. So I'd totally be happy with putting this ring back in as long as there's no scoring and the inside of the cylinder is not scored. So then I start to get a bit stumped when I look inside the cylinder and I see the walls are absolutely mint. Yeah, there's a bit of dust in there now because I was using the wire wheel to get rid of the gasket sealer, but this thing's mint. So I start to think, maybe I'll just put it back together. Maybe I'll just use the wire wheel on the valve, get rid of the carbon, and then it should be good to go. And as I'm about to rebuild it, in order to do that, you have to pop off the back case here, which houses the timing gears and mechanism. So this right here is what I found. These are the lifter arms that actuate the push rods that push up and down and then actuate the rocker arm which then open and closes the valve. This timing gear down here has everything to do with making sure that the valves open and close at the correct time. Now, when I first opened it, this plastic piece, which has broken off of this timing gear, so this arm had pressure from the spring up top and it was had this piece of plastic and it was caught and spinning. You can see the wear marks on this. It's flattened out. So it was sitting like this and spinning around and causing, I believe, the exhaust valve or the intake valve to open at incorrect times or to stay open longer than they should or stay closed longer than they should. This, I believe, is the reason why the engine was not revving out to full potential. 
look at how gentle that slope is compared to this one. You see that? So I think what's happened is this outer layer on this side has broken off completely. It's supposed to sit flat like this and then wrap all the way around. Yeah, it looks so it's, I mean, it's all mashed because of the valves, but it looks like this was supposed to sit on here like this and then wrap around and then provide that nice smooth curve as opposed to oh, like on this one, see that versus this. It looks like those valves have done a heck of a job mashing things down because that's how it's supposed to look on the right and how it looks on the left. Okay, all that's left for me to do is find another gear that doesn't have that little bit of damage there. I think one of these blocks for sure has one. Then just put it all back together. I was certainly stumped because it seemed to me like I had done the checklist in my head like I've done so many times before. And of course, this issue I've never seen before, so it makes total sense. Kind of neat actually. And that's the fun thing about diagnosing these small engines is really there's not a lot to lose. It's not that much of a financial risk if you decide to take it apart and try and fix it yourself. And uh, maybe if you are having the same issue that this video helps. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.